So as you heard in our video for Mom Mobile, we are preparing for the Falcon Tire Super Saloon Shootout, which is the battle of our daily drivers. Right. And my daily driver is Dad Mobile. And to get ready for the shootout, Dad Mobile needs a couple fixes. We got an axle that the the CV boots torn. Uh, the top hats are crazy loud, and. Uh, I got some improvements like the uh, the rear mount that we're going to try to do today and uh, possibly the top mount. Possibly the top mount. All right. So, guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. He's about to get schooled. Yeah, we'll take the axle nut off. Uh, we'll take the lower ball joint off. Uh, I'm gonna try and do it without separating the steering rod. Try to get it off like that. So, it should be able to. Yeah, you can see the grease coming out there. It doesn't take much of a hole for the grease to come out because of the centrifugal force of mm -hmm. it spinning. Oh man, it got all up on the... Yeah. And stuff. All right, we're gonna have to disconnect the sway bar so we can pull the solar control arm down, and we should be ready to go. <laughs> this boot looks absolutely fine. Boots actually probably a little road to re-hit. Yeah, it's from from May when I hit that uh, that road gator. Yeah, because I already I replaced that one. That one was evident right away, but this one took a, a while to like open up and right and start flinging. Yeah. All right. And of course, I noticed it right when I put on some some brand new wheels. Yeah. Let's go ahead and clean this up, and then. Uh, We'll put your uh, other axle. We're actually going to be replacing our axle with a factory axle. Uh, Aaron had one, luckily. That's nice. Uh, interesting. This is uh, the axle that he had put in the car, and it's a remanufactured axle. Axles typically come two ways. They come either new or remanufactured. Now, this one is an actual Honda axle that's just been rebuilt. Uh, not really sure what was wrong with it before. It may have just been uh, dry, and so they decided to do, uh, decide to remanufacture it. But if you look at everything, it's it's identical to this one, with the exception of the fact it's missing this dampener that uh, dampens vibration. So you look at the cut of the um, of this particular inner joint; it's identical. Uh, in fact, this one's stamped with uh, remanufactured. Uh, if you look at the axle bar itself, it has a slight raised area in the center just like the factory stock one does all the divots are in the same place uh, and then the outer joint is identical too with the exception of missing this dust shield so that's actually really nice uh, quite often when you buy an axle from an axle builder you want it with one that's all new chinese parts and they're not quite as durable i'm sure you guys have heard uh, horror stories about buying a remanufactured axle and going bad or clicking almost immediately. Uh, this particular one is remanufactured, so we're going to rebuild it. Uh, and uh, it's kind of cool because it's the outer joint that's bad, and that's actually more difficult to do the inner joint. The inner joint can come apart with pretty simple tools. This one takes a little persuasion to get it apart, so uh, we'll show you how to rebuild that. You know, if we lived in Canada, this could just be good rust protection. <laughs> Good reason to move there. You got two loonies for a toonie? Oh, sorry. Rather than us yakking about everything else we've done, I think we uh -huh. should just go for a drive. Yeah, let's do it. Experience the car and we can talk Jeez. about it more there. Yeah. No, not good, not enough. <laughs> I think they'd rather be down here right now. Well, for the most part. I think if we messaged uh, 
Speed Academy, they'd they'd be trying to figure out some way to to pull off a trip down here right now. Yeah. All right, got the new one or the replacement or the new old one. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I've never done this on a lift before. Doing good so far. There we go. Yeah. In some cars, you have to remove the ball joint. On this particular car, the ball joint actually bolts onto the lower control arm. Uh, oftentimes, with Hondas, that's actually part of the assembly and it doesn't do that. So now, time to Hold it back up. Okay, the only thing we really haven't done yet is put the axle nut on and uh, we're doing that for two reasons. I've got it over there with the parts that we haven't put on yet. Uh, we're gonna wind up taking the knuckles loose from the shocks and if the knuckle falls away, I don't want it accidentally dragging the axle bar out of the, of the inner joint. Uh, that's a pain in the butt to try to, you know, reinstall the bearings while the boot's on. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and leave that loose. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Uh, but now we're going to change the strut tops. So we're going to need to take the strut loose from both the top and the bottom so that we can shift it down, pull the hat out, put the new hat in, and reinstall everything. So as we're starting this project, uh, Aaron says to me, we need to pull these off so we can get to the strut tops. I'm like, no, we don't need to do that. So uh, let me show you what's up. Right here is a little access hole. So these panels come out, they allow you to get in there to the three nuts to get the them loose so we can drop them down. So easy peasy. Yeah, I knew about that, but I couldn't get when I was when you couldn't I couldn't get tools them, in there? I couldn't get tools in there. Ah, well. But you probably have better tools than I do. We shall see. My wife thinks so. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Laura is a saint. That's how the cam bolts work. Uh, they're the size of this in here, and then you rotate this to get it to work, and then this washer sits in where the cam is to tell you where it is. Now it's got, you see these little things right here? That prevents it from shifting once you tighten it down. They kind of dig into the, to the metal and prevent it from shifting. So this is pitched parallel with the ground. That means the cam was lined up with that that nub right there, that that stay, that stake. It's lined up with the stake. That's how the bolt was in there. Um, we'll actually be able to feel the little pits that were caused by this as well to make sure we get it in exactly the same place. Ready. Make it look easy. <laughs> it is easier on. In certain circumstances. These are OE. Now, whether or not these are the exact same. Level. Kiaba is an OE supplier for Honda. There are probably multiple OE suppliers. Kayaba, I find I have a lot better luck using their stuff. It's 
sweet. Any Does special it, instructions? Does it tell you which way to? We'll need a spring. Uh, we won't. Okay, because you're. Your, because your progress springs. Yeah. If we were putting them on a stock system, the springs would be under under pressure, and we need a spring hole, a uh, spring compressor, yeah. which we have, but we don't, so we won't. They look pretty dead on. Look pretty dead on. This one does not make any noise. I think that maybe the wasn't tight. Didn't torque it down enough up here. Because <sighs> it makes so much creaky noise. It does make a lot of creaky noise. No. Because yeah. it uses those two to to lock them together. Yeah. It's really hard to get um, to get it to lock or to get that that one that's in there first to. Maybe seat all the way? Yeah. So the question is, the aluminum, is the aluminum rocking on this? You know what I mean? Or is it flat, flush up against it? Mm -hmm. So we'll look at the, the aluminum hat and make sure that it's not... Yeah, looks like it's flush. I'm sure that it's cut with enough chamfer that it doesn't rock on there. So what did you use to get down in there? It was um, it was just a regular socket. A regular socket. But I had I had these all the way down, and the okay. So you were able to get this to poke up out. Yes. But maybe it didn't get enough. No, it feels like it's enough. It's just odd that yeah, this is super. I don't know. It's like as if something's been falling down onto it. No, it's uh, well, it's it's gonna fall down like that, but that shouldn't make your. That really shouldn't make your noise. I mean, that rat might rattle a little. Yeah, but that doesn't make that. Yeah, the same. but that doesn't make the the creaky noise. Well, let's just try replacing them and see if the noise goes away. You want to go down four turns total, which is fine. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Four. All right. Yeah. So clearly this is machined to seat and not and not rock. So that should be fine. So let's just try it again with the new strut top and see if the noise is not rocking. These aren't gas charged, mm -hmm. that's why that does that. things about the orientation of the, the top hat. Like what does that? That should go outward. That should go outward. Yeah. Cool. But actually I have a manual. We can look at that. These were marked yellow. This is the stock one. Mm -hmm. Usually they're marked which way direction as you can see it also coincides sides with the triangle down there. Mm -hmm. If you look at our holes. Yeah. Maybe it goes inward. Or maybe it goes forward. What have you heard? I heard, I heard 
inward and I've heard forward. Right. Good question. I think we're going to have to look it up. So, a lot of times when I find Honda has something, it's usually an outward mark, but clearly that's not going to work on this because the tripod is, is in this orientation. So, it's either going to be inward or forward. Inward looks. Yeah. But we have a manual, actual Honda manual, right? I have an actual Honda manual. So, we can, we can put it out there definitively. Yes. I've seen it both ways. Right. So we can put it, we can put it out the way Honda says. Yeah. All right. Here we go. It's definitive. The triangles point forward. After just a little bit of internet searching, uh, we this is an SPC cam bolt that's up on top, and they uh, specify 77 foot pounds. Uh, the bottom bolt is a Honda bolt, and uh, the consensus, consensus is about 70 foot pounds. Honda asked for 62, three foot pounds, but it's an M14. You can torque it tighter than that. Um, we've torqued it uh, to 70 foot pounds. So. Uh, we're now in the last stages of putting it all back together and uh, uh, Aaron uh, regardless of the fact that it, it looks like you might be behind the camera right now is actually working on the other side he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna install that one over there so because uh, I don't work I don't do all the work here just most of the work just most of the work <laughs> Hey, this is a Carter's car, so you're not going to have to do all the work. Exactly right. <laughs> you don't need to keep your hands clean for the interior or anything, do you? Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. I always figured you could wash them. Yeah. How's it going? It is going all right. Took a little work to get this lower one off there. Mm -hmm. Plus, it was, was it super tight. Yeah. I'm going to lower this, this side. Just like the other side, you can go down four turns and call it good because the front, the way the front fenders are cut, it kind of gives it that uneven appearance. Right. So it's going to lower a little bit in front because I can't go any higher in the back. So, uh, one, two, Now it should be perfect. Yep. When you're done there, give me the Allen key because I did not tighten up your collar on the other side. I did. Oh, you did? You betcha. Cool. All right. So this one should be. Installation is reverse and removal. And the arrow goes to the front. So it says in the man. So it says Honda. Last but not least is our engine mount. We're gonna go ahead and change that right now. We've got the two mounts over there. The part number for this is FDRR for the FD2. It actually works on any of the K series powered 06 to 11 Civics, including the Type R. But anyway, just two bolts actually, so it's pretty easy to take off. It's actually been a long time since I've done one of these. I did my first one in 2005. Well, looks like it's more than two bolts. 
basically we need a little engine movement. So what I've done is take out the through bolt that goes through the front mount. And now I should be able to rock the motor forward a little bit and make the room I need to get this out without having to take off the rear bracket. So there you go. We're gonna install the front bolt first because once we get this in, we can actually use the engine to push the mount back into position. Since you're not tracking this on a regular basis, 62 is fine. Um, you're gonna reduce the engine movement quite a bit. A lot of people that are running uh, turbos or headers, uh, the 62 mount actually reduces the movement enough that keeps the uh, exhaust from hitting. Because the header systems that they build for these cars, in fact, I have one here somewhere, the pivot for this exhaust is up here. The pivot for this exhaust is up here, so when it moves, it it goes like this. But since this doesn't, if you've got this in and you have a stock mount, quite often this will lift and it'll make contact with the tunnel uh, because that's actually even you know a couple of degrees of engine movement is going to make this lift up quite a bit mm -hmm. and that'll make contact. So. A lot of times, companies like Skunk and K-Tune will recommend you get a rear mount to go along with this. Uh, if you're launching on a sticky tire, you may want to stiff a rear mount so you have even less engine movement. Uh, luckily, because of the way this mount is designed, it's really meant to limit the amount of travel the engine can go forward under acceleration. So it doesn't transmit a lot of vibration if you have a stiffer mount, not like the right and left mounts do. So. Uh, Basically, you can go moderately stiff without a big problem, you know, like you can on, say, an EG or EK when you go with stiff mount. So, uh, but 62 is enough for somebody who's just, you know, driving, you know, likes to gas it hard and is trying to extend the life of the right and left mount mm -hmm. and is looking for, you know, less, a little bit more control and less wheel hop. On the nut that goes in here, there's a stake that comes down. It actually goes into a, a little lifted piece of metal to hold it still so that you can tighten it down without having to use two wrenches. That goes in like that. The front mount, by the way, is not rigid at all. Um, it's more of a limiter than it is an, an actual you know, engine mount. If you look at the way it was designed, there's a the bushing that the ball goes through has like nubs top and bottom of rubber so that when the engine moves, basically the the mount will come and hit the nubs and won't move as far. It's not really for support. I mean, you could literally with a stiff enough rear mount take the front mount off. In fact, if you look at the 2012 SI they get rid of the front mount. If you look at the uh, new um, 10th Gen Civics, they, again, they, there's no front mount on here. So you can put it on, you can leave it off, your choice. The FD Civic uses two torque mounts. They use the one we just changed down below and they use this one on top as well. Now this top one is kind of interesting. It's basically, again, kind of a, a limiter. So underneath is the actual engine mount it's hydraulically filled. It's more or less like a bubble of hydraulic fluid with a, um, with a bolt that comes from this bracket down through and then attaches to the block. So the engine is kind of resting on this uh, balloon filled with hydraulic fluid in order to minimize vibration. The problem is that's not very uh, strong. If you look at like EK Civics, which have a similar thing on their driver's side, those things rip all the time. If you look at the RSX, if you go out and hit that one hard on the rally cross, it rips that mount all the time. So Honda's solution was to put this torque mount on top to prevent it from getting ripped out with a lot of movement. Now, because, because it more or less limits movement right and left and doesn't support any of the weight, it's very, very little vibration. Now, these mounts aren't particularly strong. So if you are gonna do a lot of driving and you wanna extend the life of the mount that you have underneath there, but you don't like vibration, I would suggest using the Hasport upper torque mount. Again, because it's solid, there's going to be less movement, but there shouldn't be a lot of vibration 
transferred to your car because the engine still rests on the hydraulic filled mount and uh, that will keep it nice and smooth at idle. So we're going to replace this now. There we go. Tops up. Mount slides in easy enough. Would you recommend this kind of setup for somebody that is a daily driver kind of? I would, I would totally recommend this for somebody who is a daily driver, using their car as a daily driver. Uh, even if you're just interested in extending the life of the car, I mean, it will, I don't know if you've ever driven these cars like in first gear in a parking lot, and sometimes it'll get that kind of bouncing thing going on. Mm -hmm. The rear mount totally gets rid of that. It gets rid of that completely. This mount will actually extend the life of that mount. The rear mount will help it a little bit, but it's still gonna be getting some lift actually uh, on that mount. So putting this mount on actually helps extend the life of that mount quite a bit. And the transmission mount is actually a little bit stiff for this vehicle. So these three mounts, if you like uh, hitting the autocross or doing a little bit of work on the weekends with, uh, um, with some uh, track time, this is really an excellent choice for you. And uh, again, you've got a header on, you're launching hard, you want a little extra control, just put a little bit stiffer rear mount on it and that's gonna help out quite a bit. Uh, the next step up would be a complete mount kit, which actually gets rid of this torque mount. This becomes a solid piece that just braces a bracket and then there's a mount that mounts to the engine, a new mount for the transmission and uh, the mount for the rear. And that actually uh, controls the engine movement quite a bit more. Um, but, you know, some people, these are nice cars. A lot of people like driving them. So this uh, uh, does a really nice job of uh, controlling engine movement, puts a little bling in the engine bay and uh, does uh, a nice job of uh, extending the life of the mounts too. <laughs> So, car's all back together and ready for a little test drive. How about taking it for about a 350 mile an hour, a 350 mile <laughs> test drive? 350 miles an hour would be no. crazy. I get yeah. home in an hour. Yeah. Uh, might have some tire trouble though. No, I don't think might. they're rated that high. No. The Falcons are good, but they're not, not that 350 good. mile per hour good. Okay. Uh, just go that far. Okay, that sure, fast. sure. All right. So, anyway, uh, guys, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can put them down in the comments down below. Uh, we covered uh, a little bit of maintenance and a little bit of upgrades, and I think we're almost ready for uh, the Falcon Tire Super Saloon Shootout. Awesome. The Battle of the Dailies, and um, I think I just have one or two other things I want to do to prepare for that. Okay. And, and I know we have some other stuff on the other cars to kind of yeah. sew up. Absolutely. But I think it's gonna be good. I, even just starting the car, pulling it out, I could I could feel like feel the new mount. The new mount, yeah. It's it's it it makes it feel more like more like my my hatch or my EG or EK, like a little bit more of that kind of connected feel. Got it. So cool. I think it's cool. More immediate. Very good. All right. Hey guys, thanks for joining us uh, here at VTech Academy. Hope you learned something. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, Buy a shirt, buy this shirt. You can't buy this one anymore, but these, I think they're 18 bucks ship. Yeah. 20. All right, catch you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>